Amen. God bless you. Welcome to uh, my discussion, Monday night discussion here on Facebook Live, and I am uh, glad that you have decided to join me. I want to uh, talk about something tonight that uh, some of you may be familiar with and, uh, and others not so, uh, but um, uh, after tonight, you will become familiar with the teachings of spiritual formation and why you should uh, why you should care, why you should be concerned. I see you, Key. God bless you, brother. Uh, Brandon, bless you. Sean, praise God. God bless you. Uh, Marva, amen. Mike, I see my brother Reggie. Adrian, God bless you. Amen. Thank God for you joining Greg, uh, Ricardo, Jessica, God bless you. Uh, so many others. I see you, Del Marine uh, from uh, Jamaica and uh, Marva uh, from Jamaica as well. Uh, God bless you tonight. Um, tonight I'm going to be talking about spiritual formation and uh, uh, should Christians embrace spiritual formation. And, and can we t trust the teachings of, of um, Dallas Willard and uh, Henri Nouwen, uh, Richard Foster, Thomas Merton, and many of these guys? So uh, because this is a discussion tonight, I see Nadine, I see you. <laughs> I see you, my brother. Bless you. Uh, Calvinistic Don, Pastor Johnson, uh, down there in Bradenton. Bless you. Uh, amen. Kaisha. Uh, over in uh, Oakland, uh, Cavs in seven, and uh, so uh, <laughs> so tonight we're going to talk about spiritual formation, and um, uh, many of you again may not uh, may not even know anything about it at all. You may have never heard it before. Um, let me just kind of give you a little bit of a background on what uh, spiritual formation is. Uh, at, at present, spiritual formation is uh, being taught in uh, many colleges, universities, and particularly seminaries. And uh, I, I took two classes in spiritual formation uh, in seminary, and um, and it's taught in different courses. So you know, spiritual formation one, two, uh, and and some seminaries are even teaching a third course, which is uh, attempting to go even deeper in the uh, in the subject, but um, spiritual formation is um, the surprising thing is is that it is being taught not only in uh, evangelical churches, but it is also being taught in evangelical seminaries, and uh, particularly seminaries that are uh, very conservative in their theology, and um, it, it, it's surprising now. Here's why you should be concerned about spiritual formation. Number one, spiritual formation uh, attempts to uh, repackage Eastern mysticism, uh, Eastern philosophies, Eastern mysticism, Eastern spirituality, which is occultic, uh, and repackage it, bless you, Latavian, God bless you, uh, and attempt to repackage it uh, under what they consider spiritual disciplines. Uh, and and to, to to couch it in a biblical or Christian context, uh, and and so there, there's a period in church history where uh, you find a number of uh, mystics teachers, uh, uh, Brother Lawrence, and and a number of other um, mystics from the monastic um, uh, period. You know, this is the period where monasteries uh, uh, come into play, and there's a lot of contemplative theology, a lot of mysticism. Uh, going on, and uh, and you find a lot of bad theology mixed up in in this type of uh, mysticism as well. Well, spiritual formation attempts to take um, the take the history of that monastic and uh, mystical movement and syncretize it or combine it, blend it into uh, a number of um, principles of Eastern mysticism and and, and Eastern um, philosophy, and um, the, the the here's the thing is is that these teachings are so far from 
what the Bible teaches, that what blows me away is, is that in an evangelical seminary, on one side of the hall is an, is an apologetics class teaching you against all of these things, teaching you how to defend and how to think about these things in light of Scripture and why the Bible doesn't teach this and, and, and how we should counter uh, questions and arguments uh, with regard to Eastern mysticism and the occult and all these different things. And then across the hall, directly from the apologetics class, is a spiritual formation class where they are teaching seminary students the very things that they are teaching them against on the other side of the hall. And this is going on in, in major uh, uh, evangelical seminaries. And, um, and so the question becomes, do they, do, they, do they know that there is a conflict with the teachings and the principles of spiritual formation uh, and Christian biblical worldview? Absolutely they know. These people have PhDs. These people are scholars. These people claim to be Christians. These people articulate on one side of their brain why these very teachings are wrong, and then they go to the other side of the brain when the class is on spiritual formation and then say, well, because guys like Dallas Willard and Richard Foster and John Ortberg uh, and, and Honoré Nowen and these guys teach it, well, then it must be okay. But I am here to tell you that it is not okay. In fact, spiritual formation teaching is no different than the doctrines that Juanita Bynum is espousing. It's, it's occulted. Uh, it is spiritually dangerous. It is Eastern mysticism uh, repackaged in a quasi-Christian uh, um, theology. And, and so we're going to get into that. But I, I wanted you to kind of understand a little bit about spiritual formation. It is this idea that the Christian spirit needs to be formed or shaped through uh, the appropriation of uh, spiritual disciplines. And when you are formed spiritually, you are then able to tap into uh, uh, a dimension of power spiritually with God that causes you to be deeply contemplative, deeply reflective, deeply spiritual. Uh, and, and, and so I'm going to get into uh, many of those um, things tonight. So let me just go to the the heart of the argument, uh, because there's a lot of things that I can get into, and I, 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 I don't have the time to lay this out in an exhaustive way, but I want to really cut through the chase or, um, and say this, is, is that at the root of spiritual, for, the root of spiritual formation is universalism. Universalism. What do I mean by universalism? Universalism is this belief that all paths, religious paths, are equal. All religious paths lead to God. Everybody will be saved. Everybody uh, is righteous. Everybody is um, inherently good. This is the idea uh, of, of universalism. Uh, now, there are a lot of universal, there are a lot of teachers and preachers who are universalists. Uh, one of the ones who more popular these days, um, you know, well, he's less popular these days. He was more popular uh, in days gone by, uh, would be Carlton Pearson. And, uh, and of course, uh, he has been uh, soundly kicked out of a lot of uh, Christian circles, and you no longer see him doing the Azusa conferences and all that other stuff. Um, but but, but what's, what's interesting is, is that Carlton Pearson is not um, the only universalist. Uh, there, there are a lot of others that were never um, disavowed. Uh, you know, uh, for, for instance, uh, Billy Graham taught universalism. Yeah, Billy Graham actually did teach uh, universalism. Um, he specifically stated uh, that uh, other people would be saved who had never known or ever heard the name Jesus. Uh, of course, Robert Schuller uh, was a very, very popular uh, universalist. Um, and uh, here's the interesting thing. Now, Honoré Nouwen, who is deceased, uh, was a Catholic uh, priest uh, who is 
you can't take a spiritual formation class in the evangelical seminary without people talking about how great uh, Henri Nouwen actually is, how great of a teacher he was, and how great of a gift to the body. Well, Henri Nouwen uh, regularly uh, espoused principles and teachings of universalism as well as Buddhism and syncretized these things into his teaching and was completely unashamed about his belief that Jesus Christ was not the only way. Yet, even Rabbi Zacharias said, and he backed off. Now, to Rabbi Zacharias's credit, he backed off of uh, the statement when he was, and this was like back in 2008, uh, he had made a statement about Honore Nouwen uh, being one of, the, uh, one of the great teachers or something to that effect. And, uh, uh, and um, when he was asked about many of Honore Nouwen's teaching, uh, teachings, he said that he was unaware that uh, and retracted his statement. And, and, and so what I'm saying is, and, and I have incredible respect for Ravi Zacharias, what I'm saying is, is, is that um, spiritual formation and its teachers are very popular and their notoriety is being passed along so that people are almost like a package they are accepting the teaching because they have become accepting of the teachers. And, and, and people are not checking what these guys are actually saying. Let me just put it out here. Okay, here's Dallas Willard. Dallas Willard is probably one of the most popular spiritual formation teachers. Again, he just passed a couple of years ago uh, at 77 years old. He was a, a university professor uh, of philosophy and uh, probably one of the uh, one of the major um, spiritual formation teachers. So uh, I've got his I've got one of his books here. Uh, one of his more popular books is called Renovation of the Heart. And uh, and of course he does another one on the spirit of the disciplines as well. He's got a number of books, but those are uh, two of the. Um, two of his most important works as it relates to spiritual formation. Uh, here is what Dallas Willard has to say uh, about salvation. Uh, he says, now I believe that everyone who deserves, now I believe that everyone who deserves to be saved will be saved no matter where they are or what they do. Here's another quote by Dallas Willard. God is open and in touch with everyone in the world and for all who seek them with all of their heart and that is defined in terms of coming to love him and not just have the right beliefs about him but coming to love him and loving their neighbors as themselves so, so you'll notice coming to God uh, in, is not just about having the right beliefs about him it's, it's about just coming to love him in some abstract way undefined way uh, coming to love him uh, loving their neighbors as themselves so forth and so on uh, seeking him with all of your heart. Uh, Dallas Willard, even on his own website, he makes this statement. I am not going to stand in the way of anyone who, whom God wants to save. I am not going to say he can't save them. I am happy for God to save anyone he wants in any way he can. It is possible for someone who does not know Jesus to be saved. This is the evangelical uh, 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 professor here. And um, in, in his book, The Spirit of the Disciplines, Understanding How God Changes Lives, uh, Dallas Willard um, radically uh, redefines Jesus' words, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for my burden is easy and my yoke is light. He calls the yoke of Jesus the, the spiritual disciplines, as found in Matthew chapter 11, uh, 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 verses 28 to 29. Uh, Willard teaches that the key to self-transformation um, is tapping into the power of the kingdom of God through the disciplines. So he says, you know, what are the disciplines? Well, the disciplines, according to Richard Foster, are meditation, prayer, fasting, study, simplicity, solitude, submission, service, confession, worship, guidance, and celebration. And so when they talk about meditation, so here's one of the things. So the meditation for spiritual formation uh, is very akin to Eastern mysticism's meditation. Uh, it, is, it, is this, it is this act of entering into a listening silence in order to hear God's 
uh, voice. This silence now in God's voice, um, they teach, uh, can easily be confused with other voices uh, in the in the spirit realms. I'm going to show you how dangerous this is here. Uh, so so meditation for them is entering into solitude and then into silence and then allowing God to guide your thoughts. The biblical meditation is not about emptying your mind. It's about filling your mind with the word of God. It is about thinking reflectively on the meaning of God's word, not emptying your mind out. Not, not, not entering into places of silence and solitude and, 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 and listening uh, for uh, esoteric voices and things of that nature. When I talk about prayer, I talk about an, it, it's, it's an interactive conversation with God, basically practiced as contemplative prayer. And, and then, of course, fasting, the voluntary denial of an otherwise normal function for the sake of intense uh, uh, spiritual activity. There's a number of things. Study, there's the reading of scripture. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember uh, the phrase there that they call um, the reading of scripture. I think it's called, uh, uh, it, it, the English word is divine reading. Um, but I'm trying to remember the Latin phrase for it. But the idea is, is that you're not theologically interpreting the meaning of scripture. Uh, you're reading and then you're listening for God to tell you what it supposed, what it means to you, or what it should mean to you, and uh, and of course solitude is a state of the mind uh, for one to be found by God and freed from competing loyalties. And some of them base some of this teaching on uh, Augustine's um, teaching on interiority, uh, and that is the process of finding God through finding oneself. Uh, Augustine uh, once said. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, teach me to know myself that I might know you. And uh, so this is a process of turning inward in order to learn more about God, which is a very subjective process. And uh, so a lot of them base some of this teaching on uh, Augustine's interiority. Uh, and, and, and then it goes on again, solitude, submission, service, confession, worship, guidance, celebration, so forth and so on. So, so Richard Foster talks about this in his book, uh, celeb the celebration of discipline. Uh, so who is Richard Foster? Again, he's another major spiritual formation guru. Uh, let's listen to some of the things that Richard Foster teaches. Again, at the base of every spiritual formation teaching is universalism. Let me tell you something. Universalism will send you to hell faster than, than, than almost anything other than unbelief. <laughs> universalism is not to be played with. It is not to be messed around with. Here's what Richard Foster has to say in his book, Prayer, Finding the Heart's True Home. He says, I want to give a word of precaution because he talks about, of course, uh, prayer, contemplative prayer. And he says, I want to give a word of precaution. In the silent contemplation of God, we are entering deeply into the spiritual realm. And there is such a thing as a supernatural guidance. While the Bible does not give us a lot of information on that, there are various orders of spiritual beings, and some of them are definitely not in cooperation with God and his way. So you see how Richard Foster is encouraging the believer to enter into solitude and silence and ultimately into um, a, a contemplative realm where you are liable to bump into all kinds of spirits. And let me teach you how to know which spirit is good, which spirit is bad. And the Bible doesn't give us a whole lot of information on this. Do you see, do you not see what is wrong with this? Again, here's the amazing thing. Evangelical uh, pastors and seminaries have bit this stuff hook, line, and sinker and are teaching it to their students, and then in another class teaching them that these things are absolutely wrong. We should not embrace these things at all in your apologetics one-on-one uh, uh, class. It, it, it's, it's, it's bizarre. It is insane. Listen to, listen, to, listen to Foster in another quote. He says, but for now, I want to encourage you to learn and practice prayers uh, of protection. So in other words, when you get out into the spiritual world, uh, realm. It's very dangerous out here, so I'm going to have to teach you how to pray for prayers of protection so that you could be protected uh, spiritually while you are out in the spirit realm. 
He says, when seeking to hear from God, there is no biblical guidance as to how one may determine exactly who or what is communicating. When, when learning to hear from God, there is no biblical guidance as to how one may determine exactly who or what is communicating. Do you not see what's wrong with that? Number one, the Bible for Dallas Willard and Richard Foster uh, is, is not the final authority on all matters of uh, faith and practice. Number two, they're teaching you to, um, to determine spiritually hearing the voice of God apart from biblical guidance. The Bible doesn't give you guidance on how you may determine. So how do you determine that? So here's what Foster says. He says um, that not only could one be deceived by Satan, but one may also mistake uh, one's own imagination or human voices for the voice of God. Learning to distinguish the voice of God from just human voices within us comes in much the same way that we learn any other voice. Satan pushes and condemns, God draws and encourages, and we can know the difference. So he's teaching that through the disciplines, uh, the, the disciplines the, the, uh, that we mentioned here just a couple of minutes ago, these are the things that form you spiritually and help to shape you. Uh, there are a hundred things wrong with this. Number one, this is pseudo-sanctification. This is not what biblical sanctification is. Spiritual formation is Eastern mysticism in a, in a sanctification mask. The purpose, the purpose of of uh, sanctification is that Christ might be formed in us. What Dallas Willard teaches about uh, the human soul apart from God is that it simply needs to be renovated, that it is deformed. He doesn't teach that, that, that sinners are spiritually dead. He teaches that there is some goodness there, uh, but that that goodness is flawed. It's damaged. Uh, it, is, it, it is deformed. And spiritual formation is a process whereby any person, even an unbeliever, might be formed spiritually. Can I ask you, is this Bible here? Who subscribes to this? Is this something that Christians should be subscribing to? I've had professors who have met Dallas Willard, uh, who spent time with him, who, 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 who swore uh, uh, by, by, by everything short of their, their grandmother's grave that, that, um, that Dallas Willard was a saint of God. Listen, Dallas Willard's Jesus can't be the Jesus of Scripture because for Dallas Willard, you don't really even need Jesus in order to be spiritually formed. I'm just telling you the truth. Now, am I name dropping? Of course, because you really need to know who these players are and, and what these players are teaching. And I'm telling you, some of your major seminaries are passing along. That's where I got my books from. These books come from seminaries that, 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 that make you take, as part of your degree plan, courses in spiritual formation. It's a requirement. One of my professors asked me, so Richardson, what is your problem with, with spiritual formation? I told her straight up, I said, it, it, it's against the scripture. Uh, I, I said, and all the teachers who teach spiritual formation, the leaders of this particular movement, taught universalism. They, they, they taught that people could be saved apart from Christ. They, this stuff is pseudo-sanctification. Let's listen to, uh, uh, let's listen to uh, certain other... Uh, Henri Nouwen, let's talk about him. And I've got one of Henri Nouwen's books here. Um, who's Henri Nouwen? This guy could be considered uh, the father of the spiritual formation um, movement. You, you, you can't talk about Henri Nouwen or spiritual formation without mentioning Henri Nouwen. H-E-N-R-I-N-O-U-W-E-N. -E if you want to look up, if you want to do any research on Henri Nouwen. He's a Catholic monk. Uh, a Buddhist, a universalist, unapologetic, unashamed. Uh, um, let's hear Honoré Nouwen. Uh, here's what he says in his book, Here and Now. He says, the God who dwells in our inner sanctuary is the same as the one who dwells in the inner sanctuary of each human being. I mean, pretty standard universalism. Uh, uh, the Bible says uh, he, that of Jesus, he came to his own and his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them. 
gave he power to become the sons of God, even as many as believed on his name. See, not, not to anybody else. Oh, we're we just all brothers. We just, no, we, I mean, in, in, in a general sense, we're all part of the same human family. I get it. But, but we're not all brothers and sisters. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Uh, for, for the believer, we are part of the family of God. And the only way to be a part of God's family is through faith in his son, Jesus the Christ. And, and, but for Honore Nowen, the God who dwells in our inner sanctuary is the same as the one who dwells in the inner sanctuary of every human being. So it's a God is indwelling every human being. There is no special indwelling for the Christian. There's no being born again. There's no need for uh, regeneration, baptism or infilling, indwelling of the Holy Spirit. How, whatever your choice of language is for honoring now and everybody already has the spirit of God. He dwells within everybody. Listen to what he says in his book, Bread for the Journey. He says, prayer is soul work because our souls are the sacred centers where all is one. That, that's not only universalism, that's panentheism. That is the idea that God is not simply everywhere as pantheism teaches, but that God is in everything. Panentheism, that God is in everything. Notice what he says. Our souls are those sacred centers where all is one. It is in the heart of God that we can come to the full realization of the unity of all that is. This is a man who celebrated, is celebrated in evangelical uh, uh, universities and, and, and seminaries. He celebrated. They, they called him, this man's a great saint of God. This man is a powerful teacher of the word. So, you know, and, and you're saying, you can't, you can't be talking about the same guy. You mean this Andre Nowen? Listen to what he says. Today, I personally believe that while Jesus came to open the door to God's house, all human beings can walk through that door whether they know about Jesus or not. Today, I see it as my call to help every person claim his or her own way to God. That is in uh, sabbatical journey uh, was published in in 1998. E evangelical denominations, are, you know, even uh, people are promoting these guys. They are promoting their books. They are promoting their writings. They are making courses on spiritual formation as taught through the books of these individuals, mandatory. And then these are the same people who are talking about orthodoxy of the faith, uh, sola scriptura, and all of this other stuff. And you're like, really? Really? Oh, but, but Dallas, see, so, so what it sounds like to me, here's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like um, cognitive dissonance. It, it, it's, it, it sounds like selective reasoning when it comes down to certain personalities. So it comes down to a guy like Carlton Pearson. Oh, get rid of him. Universalism. That's garbage. He's dangerous. We don't need him. But, but all of these other guys... That, that belong, that, that, that are, their names are a staple in evangelical settings. Some of these guys are not even evangelical. Thomas Merton, who Henri Nouwen, Henri Nouwen borrowed his teaching from, was a Trappist monk that, that blended Eastern mysticism, same thing, Budo, Buddhism, Shintoism, uh, and, 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 and mystic, Catholic mysticism, all together, this is the man who Honore Nowen learned from. And Dallas Willard, Richard Foster, John Ortberg, uh, these guys regularly quote from these men. Regularly. It's in all their books. It, 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 it's mind-boggling. In, in, uh, Richard, Rich, here's some of the things that are wrong uh, with Richard Foster. And, and not only, uh, I mean, I can go through a list of all his books. But just in his book, Celebration of Discipline, uh, which I have right here, just in this book, let me tell you all of the things that are wrong in, this, in just this one book. Uh, first of all, uh, this book uh, includes a faulty view of the subjective leading of God. It teaches you how to be led spiritually in very, very subjective ways. Uh, not only that, 
uh, but it gives approval of new age teachers. Again, guys like Thomas Merton, uh, uh, you know, who obviously taught Eastern mysticism and occultism. Um, it encourages occultic use of imagination. It teaches open theism, uh, which is now something uh, that uh, you'll find being taught uh, in um, a number of universities and seminaries. You'll find the emergent, uh, uh, the emergent Christian move or the emergent movement uh, uh, has embraced open theism, and uh, not surprisingly, uh, emergent teachers embrace spiritual formation and spiritual formation teachers because again, it radically redefines how we view God from Scripture and how we view uh, salvation. Uh, this book promotes misunderstanding of the will of God in prayer, promotion of visions, revelations. Uh, uh, that are uh, esoteric and subjective. It endorses uh, the rosary, the use of the rosary, at prayer beads and the prayer wheel. Um, it is eisegetical in terms of its interpretations of scripture, Old Testament and New Testament. Uh, it encourages mystical journaling. It embraces pop psychology. It promotes Roman Catholic practices such as spiritual directors confession and penance and it also affirms uh, aberrant charismatic uh, practices particularly the ones uh, that are uh, subjective and experiential uh, in in nature uh, uh, Lectio Divina is the name of the uh, divine reading that's 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 the the Latin phrase for it, Lectio Divina, is the idea that when you read the scripture, you should not be reading it uh, theologically. Uh, you know, you should be reading it with an open mind so that God can speak to you about what this scripture means to you. And it involves a lot of discipline, a lot of silence, a lot of emptying the mind, and then you're waiting on God to, 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 to speak to you about a very subjective interpretation of this, and then of course you journal it, you write it down, because these are all these these are all these moments that God has uh, uh, kind of you know God has spoken to you. Uh, you know, so so you know, I I could go on and on and on about many of the teachings. Of, I've got one of the books by uh, uh, John Ortberg. Um, it's I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of it, uh, but it's very similar to. Um, it's it's actually very similar to, um, what's his name, uh, at Lakewood, Joel Osteen. Um, it's very similar to his book, uh, Your Best Life Now. Uh, John Ortberg's book is called, uh, hang on just a second. I will tell you here in just a minute. Um... The one that I have, uh, well, one is called If You Want to Walk on Water. Um, no, that's not the name of it. Um, hang on one second. Uh, and I, wanted, I, want you to, I want you to know about these books because, again, many of you have them on your shelf. And that's fine if they're used as points of reference and you, you understand what it is that you're dealing with. Yeah, it's called The Life You've Always Wanted. I mean, it sounds literally like the best, your best life now. And, 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 and the amazing thing is, is that it is not far from your Joel Osteen, your best life now, the life you've always wanted. And, 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 and so what's dangerous about this is, is that uh, this is self-help stuff. This is not biblical sanctification. It's not biblical sanctification at all. Uh, it is not, um, uh, it, it, it is this idea of, Harnessing these spiritual disciplines so that you can tap into spiritual realms, spiritual dimensions, and, and spiritual powers. Uh, that you can utilize principles of Eastern mysticism to become a more uh, deeply spiritual uh, and reflective person. And, uh, and I'm just here to say, and uh, you know, this, this video, it's not a long video tonight, but uh, that this is completely dangerous. It utilizes uh, occultic teaching, Eastern mysticism, obviously, which is occultic. Uh, and um, and uh, it, it's dangerous. It's it's very dangerous. And again, I, I couldn't do a a very exhaustive uh, teaching tonight 
I uh, just wanted to kind of introduce you to um, the notion of spiritual formation, what some of these guys are out here teaching, and uh, who some of these figures are, uh, so that when you do your own research, uh, you'll see exactly uh, what I'm talking about. And, uh, and, and again, write these names down. Honoré Nowen, write Dallas Willard down, write Thomas Merton, John Ortberg, uh, Richard Foster. Uh, write these names down uh, and, and, and do some research on their teaching. And, and you'll be surprised. You'll say, how in the world are their teachings allowed in evangelical seminary? See, we're trying to tell our people, you know what's funny? See, see, see this, is, this is why... Um, this is why orthodoxy uh, can be hypocritical. Uh, this, is, this is why orthodoxy can, can be hypocritical. We're, 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 we're teaching our young people that uh, you've got to be careful about postmodernism. You've got to be careful about uh, the liberal agenda, abortion, and all these different things we've got them looking out for. But you, you know what's funny is, is that, um, is, is that spiritual formation is opening the door for liberalism. And it's the same people that are warning that are teaching against all these other things. You gotta be careful about that. Uh, uh, Christian values and all this other stuff are opening the door by introducing. Uh, you may as well be teaching postmodernism. You may as well be teaching liberalism and whatever else you, you, you may as well be teaching it because this opens the door. There's almost nothing more dangerous than spiritual uh, Eastern mysticism, spiritual mysticism. It is an attempt to navigate spiritually without being born again and without the guidance of the word of God. You may as well be one of those so-called uh, uh, so woke and comedic type people. Uh, you know, I'm just spiritual. I'm not, re you know, I'm not religious. I don't belong to organized religion and church. I'm just spiritual. Well, the reality is, is that this is teaching the same thing. It's teaching people how to be, quote unquote, spiritual without being born again and how to navigate in dimensions and realms of spirituality uh, without the guidance of biblical doctrine and, and theology. So it radically redefines how you view God, how you view salvation, what you think about man. And so it changes what we believe or what the Bible teaches about the fall. And, and it doesn't teach uh, it doesn't teach total depravity. It doesn't teach that we are fallen and that we are helplessly uh, uh, disabled spiritually because we are dead in sin and trespasses. It just teaches that we have a uh, deformed spirituality and that by practicing the disciplines, uh, we're able to uh, uh, self-transform uh, through uh, the appropriation uh, of these kinds of teachings. Um, and, and, and so, you know, don't, it, it's funny. Now these same people, they'll be out there talking about, oh, you know, these false teachers like Joel Osteen and this, that, and the other. And yet they're pushing, uh, Dallas Willard, uh, Thomas Merton, Andre Nowlin, uh, Richard Foster and Ortberg and many others down the throats of, of, of unsuspecting, uh, young people who have go gone into, uh, Christian colleges and universities and seminaries for the very first time that have no idea about the dangers, the danger of this. I mean, uh, uh, putting my hand, uh, if I put your hand in the hand of a false teacher, um, you know, that's, that's, that, that's bad enough. But then if I join your hand to a hand of a demon, well, that's even worse, right? Okay. Well, that's exactly what spiritual formation does. It, 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 it's, it's even more dangerous than simply subscribing to uh, false teachers. Uh, it literally places your hand in the hand of the demonic and the occult. It teaches you to practice uh, spirituality in very esoteric and subjective ways. And listen, you want to open the door to the demonic. You want to open the door uh, to, listen, all this is spiritual rebellion. It denies, it denies the gospel it denies many of the claims that scripture makes uh, about God, about his son, Jesus Christ, about salvation and about mankind. And so we've got to be very, very careful. Uh, and, and I'm dropping these names and some of these phrases so that, of course, you can go 
and you can look them up. I'm quoting, I was quoting directly from uh, some of their books, uh, some of their interviews. All this stuff is available uh, right on the internet. I would encourage you to uh, look out for this. And if you are in seminary, or even if you are not, and you have, you've been reading, you've been subscribing, you've been thinking about spiritual formation, uh, should I um, take a course on it? Should I read some of these books? Maybe you've never heard of it before. I want to tell you that um, you, uh, you need to steer clear uh, from this thing. Now, uh, there are people in uh, seminaries uh, who will attempt to take me uh, to task for what I am saying. What I am saying is not an opinion. It's not up for grabs and it's not up for debate. And it doesn't matter much to me uh, whether they have an ED, THD, or PhD. The fact that these people are teaching Eastern mysticism and, and uh, universalism can't even be debated. It doesn't matter whether Chuck Swindoll quotes Andre Nowen or not. I am saying that what's happening on many campuses of seminaries that are evangelical and universities is, is that these people are being motivated by who sits on that board. And, and don't be fooled by that. There's pressure, uh, even at the seminary level, even evangelical universities are being pressured to conform to worldviews and beliefs that they already know are not biblical. And a lot of this obviously uh, is, is financially, economically motivated uh, or whatever. But at the end of the day, what's sad is you can't even trust many of these evangelical seminaries and universities because they themselves are subscribing to the very things that some of their other courses, some of their own Statements of faith actually denounce wholeheartedly, and yet they'll teach it to you as something, not just as something you need to know about, but something that you need to practice. Uh, see, see, see uh, there, is, um, there are two things that are really important in, in education. One is, uh, one, one is pedagogy, and that is the process of teaching. The other piece is praxis, and that is the process of applying what you have learned uh, pedagogically. And, and so here's the thing that we've got to understand. Whatever you learn, you're going to put into practice. In other words, our behavior, there's a one-to-one -one correlation between what we do and what we believe. Now, if this is being taught, what do you think people are going to start doing? Then all of a sudden now, uh, see, you, you think I'm joking around, but there are seminaries that are offering Christian yoga. And you say, what? How did that get in? I'm going to tell you how it got in. Spiritual formation opened the door. What is a spiritual yoga? Please explain to me how there could be spiritual yoga. Well, I can tell you how there can be spiritual yoga or, or Christian yoga. Because if we can fix up, if we can dress up Eastern mysticism and call it spiritual formation, well, then certainly we can dress up yoga and then say, oh, it's just exercise. It, it, yoga is just exercise. And it, it, it's Christian exercise. We'll make sure that we're listening to uh, a gospel song while we're working out and we're doing yoga and meditation and Eastern mysticism uh, all packed. And you, you see, this is how I, I tell people, say, if you're looking for a red suit with horns and a pitchfork and a tail, then you're missing who the devil really is. When the devil wants to deceive us, he comes and he joins us and he uses our terminology and ultimately what he does is he pours different meaning into our terminology and, and then feeds it back to us until we're, we're talking just like him. We're talking the way he wants us to talk. And so what's dangerous about spiritual formation, it uses all of the, uh, the, the Christian type catchphrases, it quotes scripture, it's got all of the biblical sound to it. But it's the, it's the, it's the, um, the skin of the truth stuffed with a lie is what it is. The skin of the truth stuffed with a lie. It's like rat poison. It's 90% corn and 10% uh, strychnine. And uh, so, um, so, you know, if you, I, I'd love for you to share this video. I'd love for you to pass it along because there are a lot of people who don't know about the dangers of spiritual formation. They need to know. They need to be aware. 
Uh, look through your, your own uh, bookshelf. Maybe you're reading uh, some of these authors right now. I'm telling you, you need to be warned. This is not biblical Christianity. This is dangerous. Every one of these teachers ascribe to universalism. I've quoted the major teachers. They subscribe to universalism um, and they subscribe to principles of Buddhism and Eastern mysticism, which is the occult. And uh, if, if, if your pastor were teaching those things and you consider yourself to be a Bible-believing Christian um, and, 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 and that you uh, subscribe to, of course, the Word of God as the final authority in all matters of faith and practice, then I, I can't imagine that you will be a member at that church for long. Yet, um, many of us are subjecting our minds and the minds of our children uh, to these very same authors here, uh, like Willard and Foster, Honoré Nowen, Merton, uh, so forth and so on, uh, by um, um, sending them to schools uh, that, are, that are teaching it. Uh, what can I do? Um, well, uh, if you're attending a school or you are um, sending your children to a Christian university or school, find out if they, if they are teaching spiritual formation, uh, if it is a, an elective or if it is part of the core curriculum, and, and complain about it. Uh, do some research. Send some of these quotes in uh, by these authors and, and tell them uh, Tell them that you object to a evangelical seminary blatantly teaching things uh, that are antithetical to teaching of Scripture, and uh, don't take these courses. Uh, I, I I I I took the courses. Um, I took them twice uh, at a major uh, divinity school, and uh, it, it it helped me to uh, get more of a bird's eye view uh, of of what was going on. Uh, but I don't encourage you to take these courses. I don't encourage you uh, to, to, to learn it from the standpoint of practicing spiritual formation. And uh, if you want to learn about it, uh, there's a lot of resources that you can. Uh, um, I believe on the Internet, uh, if you type in his name, Bob DeWay, he does a great piece on the dangers of uh, spiritual formation. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there that can give you even more detail and more information uh, than, than what I have done tonight. Uh, but this has been on my heart for a long time. Uh, people who have been closer to me with, that I've, I've had conversation with, I've talked about this with a great deal of frustration. It is outright deception that evangelical seminaries uh, are teaching spiritual formation. It is just downright deceptive. It is just downright wrong. And, uh, and, and they're not making apologies from it uh, at all. And they are introducing you to uh, Eastern mysticism. At the end of the day, contemplative uh, meditation, uh, uh, which is just like transcendental meditation. And, uh, you know, um, it's, 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 trust me, people. Um, or don't trust me. Uh, do the research and uh, take some of these names, take some of these quotes uh, go look at the information that I presented tonight and, um, and, and make a judgment on it yourself. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, 100% um, of every one of you should come to the exact same conclusion that I've come to. Now, the Christians who won't come to that conclusion, they're usually the type of people who are really, really uh, uh, keen and up on subjective spirituality anyway, sensationalism, things like that. Because again, for them, the Word of God is not the final authority. On, on what they end up believing and what they end up practicing. So they're not going to have a problem with it. But people who are really uh, um, concerned about what it is that they are taught uh, doctrinally and theologically, and, and they're, they're obviously they're concerned about their spiritual well-being, um, well, you'll have concern. And you will come to the very same conclusions that I have come to uh, without respect for the popularity of the, the names of these people. So I don't care how popular Dallas Willard is. I don't care how many books people have of Dallas Willard. I don't care what his, his reputation is in Christian circles. It doesn't matter. What matters is what Dallas Willard believed and what he taught. And what he taught was so far 
from biblical Christianity. Now, now, somebody said, oh, oh, see, you always throwing names around. Well, well, here's what Paul said to the Galatians. If I even, or any, if an angel or any other teacher other, uh, have, have taught you any other gospel other than what we have originally given to you, let that man be accursed. It, it, it doesn't matter about uh, who the personality is. It doesn't matter how popular they are. And like I said, a lot of very solid Bible teachers uh, have gotten caught up in the hype of spiritual formation and have even endorsed some of these. I have a great deal of respect for, uh, for Chuck Swindoll. He is one of my all-time favorite Bible teachers. He is a profound Bible teacher, and I know he doesn't subscribe to any of these things, uh, but, but he himself ha has endorsed uh, has quoted uh, uh, guys like Honoré Nouwen and Dallas Willard, and 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 then and then of course uh, you've seen what happened to uh, Rick Warren. Again, Rick Warren uh, quotes from Willard and Nouwen and and Foster all the time, and, and and so people can be very very popular, very very accepted. But listen, people, if you don't care about what's true, if you don't care about the truth then I'm going to tell you, um, you will be deceived. That's how dangerous it is out here. You will be deceived because people who even know better are not doing better. And, and they are endorsing many of these same teachers. And then you want to ask them, well, didn't you know that Nowen was a Buddhist and a universalist, so forth and so on? Well, uh, you know, how does that escape people who are so knowledgeable? who are so responsible, who have such an incredible platform. I'm telling you, it doesn't escape them. Some of them are just caught up in the hype of, 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 of the popularity of some of these tame teachers. And it happens to the best of us. It, it, happens to, it happened to me. It has happened to a lot of us. We get caught up in personality more than we do the truth. And I'm saying when you step back and you begin to examine the teachings of these kinds of guys, then we should not be endorsing them at all. We should be warning people to stay away from their teaching, and we should be warning them that spiritual formation is dangerous. And so um, that's all I have for tonight. Uh, I, I think I saw some people who were uh, asking questions. I've got time for just a few uh, questions tonight uh, with regard to this teaching on spiritual formation. If you would like to uh, ask any question uh, on, on the subject tonight, uh, I've got time for maybe uh, three or four, and uh, that, that's all I have for tonight. But I, um, let's see, uh, Michael Moody says this might be very unrelated. I think you've focused uh, a lot lately on certain teachers in the core of what they're teaching, and I see a lot of names being mentioned in their teachings. I'm very interested in your view of the, and then it kind of cuts off. Uh, uh, Mike, I don't, you said you're, I'm very interested in your view of the, and then it just kind of cuts off. Um, if I can just get that last piece, my brother, uh, then let's see. Um, yeah, it just cuts off. And I think you copied and pasted it uh, a second time, and I, I just didn't get the last part uh, of that teaching. Um, you said you wanted to, you're very interested in, in, in my view of the teaching of, and I, I just, okay, somebody says it says Catherine Kuhlman. Uh, Kat, uh, my view of Catherine Kuhlman. Um, meet me offline uh, for that, inbox me. Uh, um, because, I mean, that's a whole subject in and of itself. Uh, but I'll say this in short. Um, uh, Kat, Catherine Kuhlman, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm not, uh, the, my issue with people are not people, it's, it's what they teach. Uh, and so my problem with Catherine Kuhlman is uh, Catherine Kuhlman practiced a lot of uh, subjective and esoteric God told me. Uh, her teaching was um, very far-fetched, uh, and uh, and outside of sound biblical doctrine, that's one. Uh, and then I just have a problem with somebody 
uh, who has gotten married five times. Um, and I get it, you know, um, I'm not against, you know, somebody gets divorced, remarried, uh, that ain't the issue. Um, but if you've been married five times, there's probably a real big problem with you from a character standpoint. And uh, so I don't see Catherine Kuhlman uh, as, um, as being anybody uh, that we should be uh, admiring or listening to. Uh, some of her teachings were false doctrine. Uh, many of the events that went on in her meetings uh, were sensationalized uh, and, and, and things like that. And, uh, but now in certain circles, they'll have you to believe uh, that Catherine Kuhlman was, oh, she was a powerful woman of God, says who? I'll tell you the people who, who give her the biggest endorsements, people like Benny Hinn, uh, who said that uh, every year he would go to her grave uh, and not only memorialize her, but he would pray uh, at her grave site, uh, hoping that the power and the anointing that was on Kath Catherine Kuhlman would come on, come on him just as uh, the, the, the anointing came on the man uh, that stumbled into Elijah's uh, 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 sepulcher, and, uh, and, then, and then the power came on him. Benny Hinn taught that he would go annually to pray at the gravesite of Catherine Kuhlman so that that spirit might be on. See, that's the kind of thing that you deal with when you are, uh, you know, dealing with uh, those kind of types like uh, Catherine Kuhlman. And again, uh, you know, I don't know the lady. I didn't know the lady. The lady was, uh, you know, uh, you know, she died when I was a young kid. So, you know, uh, it's not really about her. It's about what people teach. I, I personally don't have anything against the personalities of the false teachers. Uh, they probably would be fun guys to hang out with, go bowling, play some dominoes, some spades, this, that, and the other. Uh, I probably wouldn't have anything against them personally. Um, but I would have something against their teaching. And that's the idea, is, is that we've got to love the truth, even when it means uh, going against the grain, going against what's popular, uh, so forth and so on. Uh, any other questions? I appreciate it, Mike. Uh, thanks for asking that question. Uh, anybody, anybody else um, with, uh, uh, with the question? Anybody else? Uh, feel free to ask it. Uh, otherwise, I think that is my uh, time. Um, I've got time maybe for one or two more. You'll have to retype it in so I could see it down here uh, at the bottom. Uh, but thank you for uh, joining the teaching tonight. Appreciate every last one of you uh, who have been supportive. Uh, <laughs> Big Steve said, I'm ready for dominoes. <laughs> All right. So I appreciate every last one of you uh, that are supportive of these uh, videos. Sometimes I go into <clears throat> teaching. Sometimes it's just kind of discussion, uh, just kind of talking within the, uh, you know, within the framework of Scripture. Uh, you know, but, but my goal, obviously, is to glorify Christ, exalt, exalt, exalt him, and to encourage people to, um, to learn the Word of God, to equip them uh, with a greater understanding of Scripture, uh, the what and the whys of the Christian faith, uh, and, and to warn people apologetically, to, to, to even warn them of some of the, uh, the, the false teachings uh, that are out there. So uh, at this point, if you have any other questions, feel free uh, to inbox me, and, and I will uh, get back to you uh, in Jesus' name. God bless you tonight. Thank you again. Uh, please... Um, if you would, if you feel so led, I'd love for you to communicate uh, with me as so many uh, do uh, through giving. Uh, it would be a big blessing, a big support uh, for me that enables me to continue to be able to, uh, to study full time uh, as a Ph.D. student, as well as to be able to travel uh, and to, uh, to teach and to be able to take care of my family. And so your, your, your gifts, that's what I use them for. And, uh, and there are quite a number of you. Uh, who have been uh, very supportive, and I thank you, and I do encourage any, any others, uh, if you feel so led and you're feeling generous, please, uh, to, uh, if you would, um, uh, communicate with me through, there's a PayPal link uh, that I believe is on the thread, and uh, I, I would be greatly encouraged uh, if you would do that. Uh, William asked a question about the term spiritual transformation. Uh, where does that come from? Uh, it's kind of a hybrid, so, you know, it's not necessarily a dangerous term, uh, but, you know, be careful about the meaning that's poured into it, uh, because, again, you do see uh, um, 
uh, spiritual formation is really more of the, the buzzword. Spiritual transformation, uh, you know, again, it's more of a hybrid. Nothing dangerous about it, uh, but it doesn't matter what word somebody uses. We've got to try and get down to what do you mean by that? And, and, and that's where often people get deceived. So blessings again uh, to all of you. And um, I'll see you on, Lord willing, again, Monday, 730, right here, Facebook Live. And my final word is Cavs in 7. God bless you.